As always, some specials on the show. Will Pakistan end the fast finally? A Lahore court has asked the government to show proof of Hafiz Saeed's terror activities or end his house arrest. War plans and war planes. A day after North Korean hackers access American plans to decapitate their leader, U.S. bombers fly over the peninsula. We tell you what's cooking there. Catalonia independence deferred. Spanish President Rajoy demands more clarity from Puigdemont and his government. People in Barcelona say their government let them down. Hollywood's biggest names speak out on sexual harassment by Harvey Weinstein. Democrats distance themselves as political donations come into question. Now, we've all heard about Russia's alleged meddling during the 2016 American election, but the arrest of an IT specialist of Pakistani origin serving the Democrats in the U.S. House of Representatives has sparked a political scandal. This has led to the demands of an investigation. Here's a report. Recall the Democratic National Convention in July last year. It saw an unprecedented apology by the National Committee following leaked emails which showed bias toward Hillary Clinton to the detriment of Bernie Sanders' campaign. The leaked emails were courtesy WikiLeaks. It was proof of how the Democratic Party leadership tried to sabotage Sanders' election campaign. It led to the resignation of Debbie Wasserman Schultz, the chairman of the Democratic National Convention. Now, Wasserman Schultz is back in the headlines. This time, the controversy centers around her former IT aide, Imran Awan, who is of Pakistani origin. He was arrested, allegedly, attempting to flee to Pakistan in July and now faces an array of charges including possible double billing, alleged equipment theft and access to sensitive computer systems. Police say they have a laptop of Awan showing data transfers. They say this suggests a security threat. Awan is already facing bank fraud charges. Mr. Mueller is doing a competent job. It seems to me he'll want to at least ask some questions to see if there's an intersection between the hacks of Democratic uh, officials, including Debbie Wasserman Schultz, and, this, uh, and the Awan family uh, crime ring. Investigations are ongoing. It has lent ammunition to the Republicans to target the Democrats, leading Democrats to charge that the Republicans are targeting Awan because he is a Muslim. Bureau Report, we own. Let's take a closer look at the man who has sparked the latest political scandal in Washington. His name, as you've, I'm sure, figured out by now, is Imran Awan. He used to work for Debbie W. Schultz, the former chairperson of uh, the Democratic National Committee since 2004. Awan was employed in the House of Representatives as an IT specialist. Gradually, his wife, two brothers and a friend were also hired to work in a similar capacity. Collectively, Imran Awan and associates served more than a dozen Democrats in the Congress. They extended IT help to congressional officers, computers and phones. They also helped aides and members reset their passwords, something that has been flagged by investigators. The case filed against Imran relates to a loan application made to the Congressional Federal Credit Union in January this year. The couple allegedly took out a loan of more than 165,000 US dollars by claiming a rented property as their home. Imran was arrested at a Washington DC airport just when he was about to board a flight to Karachi. And what is the DNC leaks case? During the campaign for the 2016 U.S. elections, the Democratic National Committee was hacked, allegedly by Russian hackers. More than 20,000 emails were stolen from the DNC servers and posted on WikiLeaks. Some emails have revealed that top leadership of the DNC derided the Sanders campaign. The revelations prompted the resignation of uh, Debbie Schultz, the man we spoke about just a couple of minutes back, the then chairman of the Democratic National Convention, Hillary Clinton, till date, blames the leaks for damaging her presidential campaign. And now this case adds a whole new twist to what happened or what could have happened during the presidential election. Joining us this evening, Ray Locker, National Security Editor at USA Today, and Glenn Carl, former intelligence officer from Massachusetts. Good evening to both of you. Ray, what are the facts of the case as you know them? Well, Imran Awan definitely had some kind of financial scheme going on. That's what he was arrested for. That's what he's being charged for and was trying to flee to Pakistan. The rest of it is all supposition. Did he indeed get into the DNC and take the information that was leaked to WikiLeaks? 
There's no proof of that. Actually, nobody's investigating it. What, what happened earlier this week was a group of five Republican members of Congress said there should be an investigation. By the way, the Republicans control Congress, and they have not called for an investigation into this. There's no sign that they're going to. A lot of this is smoke trying to obscure um, the legitimate investigation of the Russian connection to the DNC leaks. Um, actually, when those emails were published, there was nothing very damaging that came out of them. It was a lot of smoke and a lot of controversy, but nothing really damaging other than the implication that Debbie Wasserman Schultz, a member of Congress from Florida, had helped the Hillary Clinton campaign in a primary against Bernie Sanders. And guess what? Democrats all over the country were saying that Sanders would have been a bad candidate. So that was really nothing new. There was no real obvious collusion in that case anyway. Glenn, the American press is divided on whether this is a smear campaign or a serious breach of security. What is your reading? Yeah, I don't think that the the American press really one can fairly say is is divided. The uh, source for this uh, ostensible scandal is Breitbart, and, and and looking to Breitbart for information is sort of like looking to the Nazi Ministry of Propaganda for objective facts about the Jews. Um, so I, I don't think that we should lend too much weight to this. It's it's also I was interested or amused that my, our colleague uh, just used the, the expression there's a lot of smoke because what I was going to say is it's as though the Republican House is on fire or the Trump House and Russian House is on fire and someone points to the neighbors and says, look, they need to mow their lawn uh, to divert attention. Um, so. You know, this, this sounds like this guy has some stuff that uh, the police should look into, authorities should look into. Yes, absolutely, one should do that. Beyond that, to associate this with the uh, Russian Trump uh, scandal uh, is just a lot of obfuscation. Uh, all right. Uh, Ray, conservative lawmakers held an official meeting, as you said earlier this week, and one of them said, right. and I'm quoting, that this case cries out for a House probe. And these are uh, the details that they have, uh, that 5,700 logins by the five Avan associates were discovered on a single server within the House, and 5,400 of those logins appeared unauthorized. So there is, uh, going by uh, the, 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 the term that you both used, no smoke without fire. Um... The facts cited by these people came from alleged investigative reporters for news outlets that nobody I know of in this business takes seriously. Um, there's a lot of, you know, allegations, a lot of facts that are tangentially connected to another. Um, there's no real there there. And if there was, the Republican led House of Representatives would have an investigation. These are the same people who had a more than two year investigation into the Benghazi case and Hillary Clinton, and they proved nothing. So if the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee thought there was something there, they would be investigating because why not? But they're not doing it because there's really nothing there. And the five members of the Republican House who were in this meeting earlier this week are basically considered fringe members who no one really takes seriously. And Glenn's point was great. I mean, yes, your house is on fire and you're complaining about your next door neighbor's yard, which is exactly what's happening here. Um, it's an attempt to distract people from the real investigation into the Russian uh, interference in the 2016 election, which all of our intelligence community agrees Russia was responsible for. And we're finding more and more information about that. So this really isn't much there other than Imran Awan's criminal activity on something totally unrelated to leaking information, giving it to WikiLeaks at the behest of the Russians. Apparently, he's been on the radar of House Democrats for months, uh, uh, and uh, there are loose ends here. Glenn, how do you explain the fact that most lawmakers uh, fired him, but Wasserman uh, Schultz had kept him until, what, his arrest in July? Yeah, I, I, well, I don't, uh, I don't have an explanation for that. Uh, uh, it's hard to say. It does seem that uh, this fellow has done things that uh, merit the attention of the uh, security authorities. That is that is true. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Congress uh, and any institution will have significant numbers of people who do things wrong that uh, the 
which is why you have security authorities to, to try to keep them from doing that. But beyond that, uh, look into this uh, appropriately, yes, um, and uh, use inductive uh, reasoning, go where the facts take you, but don't uh, uh, make suppositions that cloud the, the larger issues that uh, have been substantiated by, by uh, God, exponential numbers of of facts, which is regarding the Russian uh, hacking issue. Uh, so I, I don't have an explanation, but I, I'm not going to build a theory on that until uh, one looks into this fellow separately, that's all. Ray, some of uh, the reports also said that Awan or some members of his team had links with the Pakistani government. Is a Pakistani link being explored? Is that something that uh, going forward investigators are going to be looking at? Well, look, if uh, there's something there in a criminal investigation of what Awan was doing, I'm sure that that link would be explored. I don't know with any certainty what's happening because usually most investigators don't say what they're looking at. Um, if he had a connection to Pakistani intelligence um, and that is evident in what uh, they find, well, then definitely they would explore that. Um, and like, you know, look, we hear a lot of far out theories here, and sometimes they turn out to be true. And it's possible that some of this could be t turn out to be true, but it's not true right now. And what I'm seeing doesn't seem to hold up beyond anything other than this is a guy who was using his job to get access to material he shouldn't have and was probably stealing. Um, beyond that, whether there's some greater intelligence conspiracy, I have no idea. Yeah. Well, if, some, if I could jump yeah, in, it's, sure. it's quite on the intelligence issue. It, on the intelligence issue, it is quite possible that uh, this individual uh, have associations with a foreign intelligence service. In this case, it would appear to be the ISI, but we do not know. Um, it's certain that uh, dozens of intelligence services and hundreds of individuals uh, in Washington are targeting the. Uh, as the uh, levers of American power, from Congress to the executive branch to to uh, staffers to elected officials to journalists, uh, that's uh, that is happening. Uh, there are hundreds and hundreds of people who do that. Uh, to give you one data point to show how extensive the the intelligence activity and threat to the United States is, the the Russians have. Um, more intelligence officers active in the United States than the United States employees uh, in the world. Uh, and it goes on and on from there. That's just one country I'm citing. So it's quite possible this fellow has associations that counterintelligence and law enforcement authorities should look into. But I don't know what the facts are. And we can say with confidence, as we've said, that to associate that possible criminal activity or intelligence activity with the Russian issue is just to obscure issues. Right, so you both uh, seem to believe that this is just an attempt to deflect attention from the Russian role in, in, in what happened in the election, Ray? Would that be a fair assessment? Yeah, I think that's a consensus right now, and that's what it looks like. Um, look, if something were to materialize that changes that, then I'm sure people would investigate. But the people who are talking about this now, are, I believe, are using it to deflect attention from the other investigation. Okay, fair enough. You really have to look at the source here. I was I was facetious, but also serious when I uh, in my characterization of Breitbart News. You always want to look at the source of where the reports come from, and you also want to look at the representatives who are pushing this supposed story and what their right. their uh, the acts that they are grinding are. All of them, Breitbart and these Congress people, are as my colleague said, fringe people who frankly, objective um, seekers of facts and truth uh, would not lend much weight to. Unfortunately, 35% of the American uh, electorate uh, swallows this stuff whole. Uh, and that's a threat, frankly, to the republic. Yes, and uh, Wasserman Schultz, in fact, called them, and I'm quoting, right-wing media circus fringe. But we haven't heard the last of this. Thanks very much, uh, Ray Locker, Glenn Carl, for joining us and sharing your thoughts on this. This is a story that, that continues a new political scandal in the U.S.